Okay, uh, let's have a short review of the data link layer. Uh, in this figure, you have uh, Alice trying to connect to Bob, right? And this is the physical connection that will allow Alice to access the data from Bob. You will notice here that Alice belongs to a local area network. And uh, this local area network, uh, it has this gateway which uh, or this switch which is connected to uh, uh, a router okay, uh, via a point-to-point -point wide area network router 2 and then this router 2 is connected to router 4 uh, which is located in another ISP and then within this ISP basically a national ISP you have a switch 1 and then this connection uh, eventually will lead to the node of Bob. Right. So, in order for this Alice and Bob to communicate, there should be a direct link. Link. Okay. So this, you have this path. If you look at the, if you trace this, right. So they have this uh, direct physical link, and uh, the data will have to pass to different ISPs. And uh, this is the physical connection. Now, for the logical connection, this is the interaction that will happen in the data link layer. So uh, here it's using TCP IP protocol suite. So we have the data link layer of uh, the node of Alice interacts with the uh, data link layer of router 2. So in essence, what's saying here is the data link layer from Alice can talk to the data link layer of uh, uh, of this R2 okay and then uh, this R2 also has another uh, data link layer that is connected that can talk to the data link layer of R4 now you might wonder uh, why are there two uh, data link layer implementations in router 2 well unlike in Alice where you only have one uh, data link layer now the purpose of this is that it is possible there are different there are many different types of data link layer implementation or data link layer protocols so in this scenario you have the data link of Alice is uh, talks with the data link compatible to uh, the data link of router 2 in this part now for these two routers to talk R2 and R4 they use a different data link layer protocol so that's why you have a separate data link layer uh, implementation here in router 2 okay so that's how it's done so we recall us also last time that uh, nodes are the end host and uh, the routers and links are the networks in between nodes so given this uh, diagram you have this end ho end the host here a laptop and you have a server hit here look at it located somewhere and you have uh, these routers symbolized by these uh, uh, circles or ellipses okay. when we condense them they become nodes and these nodes are connected by a, a, a link now the purpose of, uh, in general the purpose of the data link layer is to provide reliable delivery of data from, uh, from one node to a node to another node via the link Okay, so that's the essence of the data link layer. Provide reliable delivery of data across the link. Okay. So we have discussed, uh, I will discuss this later in detail. So framing, uh, flow control, and uh, error control are the main services provided by the data link layer. Sometimes uh, congestion control is also implemented in the data link layer, but more often than not, they are implemented in the network and the transport layers. Now, going back to the description of links, um, so we have here links. Okay? Now, there are two types of links in the data link layer. This one uh, can either be a point-to-point -point link or a broadcast link. What's the difference between the two? So the data link layer controls how the media is used and the point-to-point -point link means that the link is dedicated to uh, the two devices communicating if we look at this illustration here so this uh, switch here and this router here 
are connected by a link so remember this is a, a node this is another node and you have the link here now what type of link is this this is called a point to point uh, one so in essence this is a point to point link now the other one is a, the broadcast link wherein the link is shared between several pairs of devices now this is uh, illustrated in a local area network okay? so wherein you have uh, multiple nodes that are uh, connected to uh, a link okay and uh, the data link layer is actually divided into two sub layers we have the data link control sub layer which deals with the common uh, issues uh, that are common to point to point and broadcast links sometimes broadcast links are called multi point links right so uh, in this illustration in this figure so you have uh, the data link layer of a broadcast link is divided into two okay? the other uh, sub layer is the media access control sub layer which deals with issues specific to point to point and broadcast link so that's the difference between the two data link layer common to point to point and broadcast while media access control is specific to uh, the point to point or broadcast link okay so normally in a point to point link there is no need for a media access control because the the, li the link is dedicated to the two nodes that are communicating whereas if you have a multi point or broadcast link then there should be a medium access control mechanism which we will discuss in uh, chapter 12 in chapter 11 we're going to talk about the details of the data link control uh, sub layer